In this question, we're given a universal data set, which is denoted by the symbol over here. And we're told that in this data set contains every odd number that's less than 30. We're also given set A and set B. A contains the numbers 3, 9, 15, 21 and 27, and B contains 5, 15 and 25. And in part A, we're asked to complete the Venn diagram to represent this information. So the first thing that we can do is to label our Venn diagram. We'll call this circle A, and we'll call this circle B. So now let's take a look at what these parts of the Venn diagram mean. So we can say that the numbers in set A will fall within this blue circle, which represents A. And now we can also say that the values in set B will fall within the pink circle, which represents B. But now what about the part in the middle? Where they intersect. So the yellow area in the middle is a point of intersection between A and B. And inside this area of intersection will be any value that falls in both A and B. And so given the values in the question, let's begin to fill in our Venn diagram. We'll start with set A. We're told that the number 3 falls in set A. Looking at set B, we can see that 3 does not fall in set B, and so 3 is only in set A which we can write in the blue circle. Then we have the number 9. Again, we can see that this is only in set A and not set B, so we can write this again in the blue circle that represents just the part for A alone. Then we have 15. Looking at the number 15, we can see that it's in set A. And to take a look at set B, we can see that it's also in set B. Since 15 is a shared value between set A and set B, we can say that 15 is a part of set A and set B, and so 15 will fall within the intersection of A and B, which is in the yellow shaded area in our diagram. Next we have 21 and 27. Neither 21 nor 27 are in set B, they're only in set A, and so we can fill in these values in the circle for set A on our diagram. Now looking at set B, we've already completed 15, and so we have 5 and 25 remaining. 5 and 25 are only in set B and are not in set A, which means we can write this in set B. But although we've completed both set A and set B, we haven't quite completed this question. We're told that the data set is all odd numbers less than 30. And so this means that the odd numbers less than 30 that are not in set A, nor are they in set B, will fall outside of the circles in the Venn diagram. The odd numbers that are less than 30, that are not in set A, nor are they in set B, will fall within the green box, but outside of the circles A and B. Now let's think about all the odd numbers less than 30. The number 1 is not in set A or in set B, but it's still an odd number less than 30, so we can place it in the box here. Now the number 3 is already in set A, the number 5 is already in set B, 7 is not included in A or B, so it will also fall outside of the circles. Number 9 is in set A. Number 11 is not included in A or B, so this will fall outside of the circles. 13 will also fall outside of the circles since it's not in A or B. 15 is in A and in B. 17 is not included in set A or set B, and so 17 will also fall outside of the circles. So will 19. 21 is in set A, so it won't fall outside of the circles. And then we have 23, which isn't in set A or set B, so it will also fall outside of the circles. Now 25 is in set B, 27 is in set A, and the final odd number less than 30 is the number 29, which isn't in set A, nor is it in set B, and so 29 will also fall outside of the two circles. Part A is worth 4 marks, so let's take a look at where these marks are allocated. Now the first mark is for labelling the Venn diagram correctly. We label the circles A and B, which will allow us to get the first mark for this question. Now the second mark is for having only the number 15 within the intersection, which we've clearly shown in our diagram. And now the third mark is for having the values 3, 9, 21 and 27 in the circle for A, or for having the values 5 and 25 in the circles for B. And now we've done both which will allow us to get that third mark. 
And finally, that fourth mark is for getting every single odd number less than 30 that are not included in set A or set B, and including them outside of the circles in the Venn diagram. And now since each number in the universal data set of odd numbers less than 30 are all in the correct place, we've achieved the four marks needed to get full marks on part A. We're now told that a number is chosen at random from the universal sets. And in part B, we're asked to find the probability that the number is in the set A or B. Now looking at our diagram, we need to find the number of values that are in either set A or in set B, and this includes the intersection. So we'll see we have the number 3, 9, 21, 27, 15, 5 and 25. All of these numbers fall within the set A or the set B. And the numbers outside of the circles don't count because they're in neither set A nor set B. And so counting the number of values which are in set A or set B, we can see that there are 7 values. And we have a denominator of 15, since we have 15 values in total. And now 7 over 15 is in its simplest form, we can't simplify it any further. And so we can say that the probability that the number is in the set A or B is equal to 7 over 15. Now part B is worth two marks. The first mark is for getting a numerator of 7, and the second mark is for getting a denominator of 15, allowing us to get full marks by getting an answer of 7 over 15.